Santa Cruz Warriors and Austin Spurs are ready to do it again after last night's thrilling finish that resulted in a two-point win for the home team. Catch the back end of the back-to-back -back between the 2015 Western Conference finalists right now on the NBA D-League Network. Well, hello and welcome courtside to Kaiser Permanente Arena, friends. I'm Kevin Dan alongside Drew Schiller. And Drew, last night was franchise win number 100 in the regular season for the Santa Cruz Warriors since moving from Bismarck. And what a way to get it with the buzzer beater. It came in the most thrilling way possible. Tied late, Santa Cruz got the stop on the defensive end that it needed. And then with the time winding down, Jawan Staten was able to penetrate, get into the lane, and kick it to Chris Udofia for the first game winner in his career. As I asked him after the game, yes. he said he had never made a game winner. And it wasn't just that shot for Chris Udofia, Drew. He had a double-double, 16 points and 12 rebounds, by far his best game in a C-Dub uniform. And it was how efficient he was that was so impressive. He was 8 for 11 from the field, and this is not a guy that gets a lot of plays called for him. He's a dirty work guy. He clean, gets offensive rebounds. He has a knack for cutting off of the off of the ball. He's in the baseline. He sees his man fall asleep, and he cuts to the basket. And you see here the game winner, the high arcing rainbow shot. And it was so cool seeing the way that the Santa Cruz players reacted. And it was Daniel Orton and Elliot Williams who really seemed to be more excited than anybody else. And those were the two guys that we thought were possibly going to get the ball late, but they didn't. They were extremely happy for Yadofia. Well, taking a look at the Austin Spurs, the D-League is very much a next man up league. I know yes. you've used that phrase before, Drew. And that's the case I for the that Austin Spurs. I made that phrase up. No one else had nope, said that no before one Drew Schiller. That before. No football coach Never. had ever said that. Nobody. Never. But that was the case for Austin with Bryce Cotton getting the Gatorade call up to Phoenix. So taking his place in the starting line was Kiefer Sykes. 16.6 assists. He did a nice job. So here we go. Second half underway. Dofia dribbling around the perimeter. Anderson had 16 points in the first half on 16 shots. Eddie lost the handle, and it's taken away by Griffin. Griffin down the lane, scoops it up and scores. Elliot Williams was right up in Eddie when he caught that three, or that ball beyond the three-point line. He forced him to put the ball on the deck. You know, Eddie had a three slip out of his hands last night, too, when he was wide open in the corner. Orlando Johnson, nice feet down low. Sine, easy lane. And probably a smart play by Aaron Kraft just to let Sine lay that in because you don't want a ticky-tack foul if you're Santa Cruz to give Sine a three-point opportunity. Mohamed Sine, a former lottery pick in 2006, drafted by Seattle. And Elliot Williams has some mojo right now. He does, and that shot did not look like it was going in. We had a good angle of it, and it looked off to the right. But for Elliott Williams, when you release it and it doesn't, you don't think it's going in and it does, it just continues to build the confidence. You're living good when that happens. Griffin, TG draws two with a left hand, tried to get the angle on Sine, the rim protector, and couldn't do so. Down low, Sine, his second field goal. Now there's an example of Kyle Anderson's ability to pass the basketball. He has not registered a triple-double this year. We talked about that last night in game two, but he is a threat. He registered one in college at UCLA, and with so many more possessions in professional basketball, I'm pretty surprised he hasn't yet this year. Well, if he gets a sign next year, he will certainly get a triple-double with the Austin Spurs. That would be my hunch. Well, Kyle Anderson, I guarantee you, he's telling himself every night, I do not want to be a sign next year. You want yes. to be in the association with the Spurs in the rotation every night. Tough shot from Orlando Johnson, well short. Santa Cruz on the break. Michael Thompson, little running hooks good. Looks down for a second at Mohamed Sine. Six point lead, C-Dubs. Well, we have not seen a lot of transition opportunities and that favors Austin because Santa Cruz wants to get more buckets in transition, but they just have not been able to get out. Austin's been doing a good job in transition defense. Thompson with five points now. Eudofia working baseline. Kraft, the D-League Defensive Player of the Year, sticks right in front of him. Just one on the shot clock. Anderson tried to run into Kuzmich, got out of the way, smartly did Kuzmich, and an air ball leads to a shot clock violation. Well, that's the second, maybe third shot clock violation of the night for Austin. And at times, it looks like they just don't know how much is left on the shot clock. And that 
goes on the point guard, but Kyle Anderson, who's basically a point forward, he's got to know at all times how much time is left. Jarrell Eddy replaced by Jonathan Simmons, who came to the scorer's table about 40 seconds into the second half. Austin back in that zone. Now kind of morphs into a man. Thompson, open look at a straight on three. Well short, but tipped out by Orlando Johnson. Well, Thompson can be a streaky shooter, and I don't know if that's a good decision to go under ball screens with him because he can make threes in bunches. He had five threes against the Oklahoma City Blue. With Clay Game Thompson yep. in attendance. Clay's not here tonight, I wonder why. Hey, he's playing in a pretty important game. Griffin tries to yam it down over Mohamed Sine, who says, no, sir. Looked like he might have blocked that one, but instead it's off Griffin. Oh, he blocked it, but I think that Griffin almost tried to regain control and hit it out. That must have been the case. Because Sine definitely got a piece of it. There's Jonathan Simmons, seven points for him. Dofia to Anderson, puts it on the deck, runner up in money. Nothing you can do about that. That is simply unguardable at this level. I'm not sure I'll ever get tired of watching Kyle Anderson play basketball. So fun to watch. He has 18. And that's atypical to say about a guy who's not a high flyer. Williams tries to throw it down in traffic, put back the first attempt, not quite for Kuzic, goes back up and gets an and one. The fans get to their feet here. And that is important for Kuzmic to make this layup and absorb the contact. He misses one the first try, but gets a second crack at it. And he's excited, because as we talked about in the first half, he misses too many shots around the rim for a guy his size with his athleticism. Six-point lead for Santa Cruz. Kuzmich stuck on 16. Missing the free throw. And he's upset. He's a very good free throw shooter for a big man. This game has mostly been played within two possessions. A momentary eight-point lead earlier in the game for Santa Cruz. And we have a push in the back on Mohamed Sine. That'll be his first. Keith right back in for Mufon Udofia. So Austin getting big now. A couple of guys who could play the five at the D-League level. And Keith Wright. And Mohamed Sine. Sine was coached by Casey Hill's father in Seattle, Bob Hill. Longtime former NBA coach. And now Austin is back to the zone, which they primarily played in the second quarter, and it really disrupted Santa Cruz. The Warriors were just 5 for 22 in the second frame. Leads to a turnover there. Here's Anderson at the foul line. Lob down low to right, tips it to nobody in particular, and there's Aaron Kraft. AC. Thompson, left angle, three, money ball. And a timeout called by Ken McDonald. Santa Cruz has its largest lead of the game at nine points. This is a full timeout. We'll be back in two minutes. You're watching the NBA D-League playoffs on ESPNU.